Welcome to Cynthia Untamed. This is your youthful and educational platform where we have conversations with and about children and young people in Africa. And we aim to inspire the current generation of leaders across the continent. On the 7th of July, the President of Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta, signed into law six parliamentary bills. One of them includes the Children's Bill of 2021. Now, once the bill is published by the National Council for Law Reporting, it will officially become the new law for children in Kenya, replacing the Children's Act of 2001. In this and the next couple of episodes, we will have a conversation on how the new law will promote the rights of children in Kenya. So stay tuned and remember to tell a friend to tell a friend. We've got some exciting news. The children's bill of 2021 which we have been analyzing in previous episodes is now the children's act of 2022 after it came into force on the 26th of july 2022 this is the last bit of the series of the children's bill analysis and we are going to be looking at part 9 part 12 and part 14 of the children's act of 2022 so what did I find interesting under part nine? Part nine under section 134, uh, this particular part is actually focusing on guardianship. Um, so of course it says that a guardian shall be appointed under the act and shall be a Kenyan citizen as per section 1253. Uh, but in this particular episode, I want us to look at the fine. So under section 134 of the act, the fine against guardians who willfully commit an offense against a child. So you have been given a child to protect and then you don't do that. You commit an offense. So that fine has gone up from a fine not exceeding 50,000 shillings or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year or to both. Such fine and imprisonment to imprisonment for a term not exceeding five years or to a fine not exceeding one million shillings. So can, I, I hope you got that. So we're talking about a fine not exceeding 50,000 going up to a fine not exceeding one million Kenya shillings and up from a term not ex exceeding one year has gone up to five years. And I think this is so important. You know, in Kiswahili, they say, Iwe onyo kwa wale wamefanya vivyo hivyo. <laughs> I hope I'm saying it right. Because I think when you commit an offense against a child, you really must be punished and punished to the full extent of the law. So I'm really so excited to see that fine going up just so that people are warned and they know that there are serious consequences for abusing a child, for committing an offense against a child under part 13 which provides for adoption under section 189 the law now requires that the applicant should be more than 21 years older than the child and previously the applicant was required to be at least 21 years older than the child so a slight amendment there but there is a difference between more and at least when I was reading the new Children's Act of 2022, I also saw something uh, that in the Children's Act of 2001, the wording provides that a homosexual was banned from adopting a child. But when you look at the current legislation, it's actually silent on that matter. So I do not know what the position is in terms of that. And then lastly, uh, when you look at section 193 of the Children's Act of 2002, it says that international adoption is now referred to as inter-country adoption. Um, I don't think it really makes a difference there because international is, let's say if you are uh, a Kenyan, no, you're a Ugandan who wants to adopt a Kenyan child, that's international. But now the wording is intercountry. I think it's just a matter of semantics there. I really do not think it has any consequences as to how adoptions are done. But if you are, have a contrary opinion, please let me know in the comment section below. 
Now, lastly, part 14 talks about children in conflict with the law. So this section includes provisions that allow children to be assisted in court. It also outlines the objects and principles of diversion which prevent children from being imprisoned. Um, these are efforts that have been there for a while now, at least the entire time I have been in the children's advocacy space, that there have been efforts to enable children to escape the consequences of the justice system. Because I, I mentioned in my previous episode that when a child is taken to prison for three years, then they lose their entire life. If they they go when they are nine and they live when they are two, when they live when they are about twelve or thirteen, it means they have missed out on their early years of learning. They have missed out on the opportunity to socialize, make friends, get some skills outside of the justice system. So when you say that you can now provide assistance to a child who is in conflict with the law, it then makes the process easier so that they can reintegrate back into society. And also when you divert their cases from the justice system, it means you're also giving them a second chance in life. And giving them a second chance in life could really be the best way of enabling them to thrive. And that is it for our series on the Children's Bill of 2021, which is now the Children's Act of 2022. I'd really like to know what you think of the new children's law. As a child's rights advocate, how has, has it made your life any better? Has it made your work any easier? Or is it too early to kind of evaluate the gains? Please do let me know. If it is too early, do let me know what you probably expect as a child's rights advocate, probably in the next one or two years, especially now that you're heading into the new government. What do you expect from the new government that will be in place in terms of advocating for children's rights? What do you think should be done better? What has been done well? And where the, can the new government improve? So that even we as child's rights advocates can know what to tell the government what do we expect from the government and when we meet the children we work for the children that we serve what do we tell them are we able to tell them about this new law are we able to tell them that now the law in kenya is stronger and it's there for them so that they can thrive in this society please do let me know in the comment section below and i'd also like to ask you to share this video with a friend whether someone who is a child's rights advocate or is aspiring to be a child's rights advocate or who may be a child who is able to watch this video and uh, share it with a friend thank you so much for being part of cynthia untamed as always and i will see you in the next episode